And also, uh, we've lost Glenn Reiner, a member of this church, his wife, Evelyn Hicks, uh, their daughter, Kelly, her husband, Buck. So we are uh, also in prayer and uh, remembering Glenn. His service will be here on Thursday at 2 o'clock. And uh, so if, if you are free and able to come, I know that they would love to see you. And if not, I know you will be keeping them in your thoughts and prayers. Uh, this has been a very difficult time for them, of course. I so want to, to remember them. Uh, we are happy to have you all here. We look forward to a wonderful time of being together today. Our Sunday school classes have started up. We've got a new class now meeting in the library. Uh, so adults, uh, you have many opportunities for Sunday school. And our small children uh, also have started back up. So uh, 10 o'clock is Sunday school for those ages. And we look forward to adding to our slate of classes. Are there any other announcements for us this morning? <coughs> Welcome again to Pentecost. Let us continue our worship of God. Come. Come. 
Holy Spirit, come. Whisper to us. Shout to us. Come.
you to stand with me and face them. Do some of you have little eggs that shake? Did some, did some of you get little eggs that, okay, you're going to need those. You're going to need them. This morning is Pentecost. We are celebrating this special day when the disciples, after Jesus died, they were all alone. And they didn't know what to do. And they were kind of scared. They were all gathered in a room. All of a sudden, like Jesus told them, there came a wind into the room. A wind! There also came fire like tongues, like tongues of fire. They didn't know what was going on. God was sending the Holy Spirit. And all of a sudden the disciples because there were people in the city there who spoke all different kinds of languages. Those disciples were given the gift to speak to them in their language. And the people said, what? Wait, I, I hear my language, but they, they don't know my language. How are they saying it? But it was the Holy Spirit. So today, during the reading of the scripture, we're going to be hearing some different languages. But I have another language I want to teach you that we're not going to listen to today because it's a quiet language. It's sign language. Do you know what sign language is? You know what sign language is, right? People who cannot hear have to communicate, and so they developed movements with their hands that talk. So they speak with their hands. And so sometimes in a church you'll see someone interpreting what's being said with their hands. And that's called sign language. So I want to teach you the sign language for come, Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit. And when we say it, we're going to hear the wind. We're going to hear the fire. Just like those disciples did that day. Are you ready? Here's what come looks like. Point, point out, pull it in. Just like that. This is come. Holy Spirit is holy. Try that again. Holy Spirit. So to say come, Holy Spirit, we put it all together. And we say, ready? Are you ready? Turn around. Let's, let's do it for them. When we say, come Holy Spirit, we're going to hear the wind and the fire. Are you ready? Here we go.
singing and like a good teacher, I'll, I'll speak about two things instead of just one. Um, the, the new CDC guidelines that have come out um, over the last week caught a lot of off guard, but they were based on good science. And so we've gone through those, I've gone through uh, what their recommendations are. The session has voted to, to change policy based on recommendations coming up. But what, what Kathy wanted me to explain to you is why singing is treated differently. Uh, singing is something that we discovered very early on in the process that produces a unique problem. And uh, it was demonstrated in this country, but not only in this country, uh, at a choir rehearsal in Seattle, Washington, where of the 61 choir members that gathered for a two and a half hour rehearsal, 53 of them got COVID and several of them died uh, because of that. Uh, what what the scientists have dug into this and, and figured out is that when you sing, you don't use your lungs the same way that you use when you talk. When I talk right now, I'm just barely filling up my lungs. It doesn't take much wind to, to talk. But when you sing, you, you breathe really deeply because that sustained breath. And when you breathe that deeply, the bronchial sites open. And that's where the virus lives. And so that's the reason singing seems to spread the virus much more readily than other causes. That said, the current CDC guidelines are based on sound science. And what the science is telling us is the vaccines are working. And that if you are vaccinated, it is now safe to sing. And that's, you're, you're safe to be unmasked in, in many cases, but if you're not unvaccinated, it doesn't, it, it, it doesn't count for you. If you haven't been vaccinated then, and there are many reasons to not be vaccinated, it could be for health issues why you couldn't uh, get vaccinated, or you could be younger than 12 years old. And if you are not vaccinated, you're still at risk. And so that's the reason we, we are still asking for people who are vaccinated to wear a mask, or unvaccinated to wear a mask. And that keeps everybody safe that either couldn't get vaccinated or didn't get vaccinated. It keeps, us, keeps them all safe. If you've been vaccinated, the science seems to show pretty well that you're protected. And so that's that's why we're seeing some, some lightning. Okay, so that's the one thing I was asked about. The second thing I think I should do is tell you a little bit about the anthem we're about to sing because it's a very different style than you're used to in this church specifically. It's kind of a mid-century modern style. Uh, this is Pentecost Sunday. So this is a piece we ordered years ago. And our, our uh, late guitarist choir member, Robert Hansel, it was one of his favorite pieces. He always asked for us to do it. But it's a piece called Spirit of God by organist Richard Prudel, who was, I believe, at the, uh, the National Guard. Um, it, is, it is very evocative of, 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 of Pentecost. What you hear in it is don't think that David has collapsed and fallen on the keyboard of the organ because there are tone clusters. Tone clusters are simply you just play all the notes. And, and so, but it represents tongues of fire coming down, and you'll hear that. You'll also hear places in it when it's talking about equipping new saints to spread the news and go out into the world. You'll hear the voices coming in at all different times, and that's to represent that the saints going out in different lands and, and addressing them. The text really quickly is, Spirit of God unleashed on earth with rushing winds and roar of fire. With tongues of fire, saints spread good news. Earth kindling, blaze her louder acclaim. You come in power, the church was born. O Holy Spirit, come again. From living waters, raise new saints. Let new tongues praise the risen Lord. With burning words of victory won, inspire our hearts grown cold with fear. Revive in us baptismal grace. Revive and fan our smoldering lives to flame. <coughs>
Our scripture lesson this morning comes from the second chapter of Acts, the story of Pentecost. Listen now for the word of God. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind that filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages. We hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, People of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I said. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. Good. 
they're able to hear each other. They're able to hear their native language. How can that be? It is so amazing that those hearing can only conclude that the disciples must be drunk. Isn't that assessment typical of those who are unaccustomed to erratic behavior? The prejudgment, the assumption is that these men who have never studied these languages must have acquired the ability to speak from some artificial source. I'm not promoting drinking or intoxication or toxic relationships or any substance for the purpose of doing something different. But why did the Pentecost crowd assume that the disciples were drunk because they were doing something extraordinary. They were doing something that required openness and vulnerability, thinking outside the box. They were doing something that had never been done before. There was no tangible explanation for it. But we know different. We know that in this moment, God poured out the Holy Spirit and it changed lives. As we heard in French, Nancy, and German from Emily, Spanish from Michelle. All flesh would now be empowered to proclaim the resurrected Christ everywhere. Old and young, women and men, slave and free, would all receive the power of God to prophesy, to see visions, dream dreams. This was now proof of Jesus' new life. This new experience of power. This new boldness to proclaim the great deeds of God. This demonstrated that Jesus was alive, making possible the transformation of the disciples who in turn would make possible the transformation of the world. Through ordinary human speech, the Holy Spirit established unity amid diversity. Members from one group made understandable the message of God to members in other groups. All would belong to the covenant community. The community that had gathered in Jesus' name was now made something that they were not before. Prophets of God's word. Messengers of the good news. The Spirit was given to all of them. Not just the 11 plus Matthias, the entire community that was gathered. The law had been given only to Israel. The coming of the Holy Spirit was to indwell each believer, whether Jew or Gentile. That was something new. That had not been done before. Seeming to be drunk just might be the sign of a healthy community. Rather than seeing ourselves as 150 years old, rather than dwelling on the energy we 
don't have, the ways our bodies don't work. Perhaps the story of Pentecost reminds us that God's Spirit was not given to a choice few. We all have been given the power to think outside the box, to do something that has never been done before. If we don't appear to be drunk, maybe we're not fully in the Spirit. The good news of Pentecost is that the church, the community which is the living body of Christ, matters. It's not that we have been given a mission, but that God's mission as a church. We assemble to be dispersed, to be mistaken for the drunken fools for Christ that we are, to speak and to act not by our own wits, but through the Spirit's life-giving power for everyone, so that everyone Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let people prejudge us. Let people assume we are filled with new wine. We know different. We know that the Spirit is drawing us out to be good news to feed, to visit, to provide shelter, to unify, to be the language that others need. The Spirit of God is upon us. Let us make that known and understood by all. Let us make that known and understood in part by saying together a portion of the brief statement of faith, saying what it is we believe. We trust in God, the Holy Spirit, everywhere, the giver and renewer of life. The Spirit justifies us by grace through faith, sets us free to accept our Bonnie Bryant 
shared this with me from today's uh, paper. Uh, this is from uh, the section Local History. Uh, it's about Dr. Jonathan Waverly Bachman. And in the article, what Bonnie noted is that he mentions Miss Hattie Ackerman. And um, he says, uh, as he is talking about uh, his work, that he's finding the sick in Chattanooga better, uh, but uh, not so Miss Hattie Ackerman. He says there's a north breeze which is bringing cooler weather. And then he says, P.S. Miss Hattie says, living or dying, she is the Lord's. So it is well with her. Isn't that beautiful? So as we remember our 150 years, look at that. It, it comes up every once in a while. So we remember Miss Hattie as well, and all of those who have been struggling uh, with life and death uh, these last weeks. Let us join our hearts together in prayer. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this amazing and astonishing day when you gave us the Holy Spirit and as you continue to pour out your Spirit upon us, God, we give you thanks and praise. We pray that indeed we will be infused with the power from on high. That God, you will give us the boldness and the courage of those early disciples to be the language that people today need to hear. A language that shares the great deeds that you can perform in us and through us, we ask for your help in doing those deeds and determining how you are at work in us. God, there are many places of pain and division still around us. We read about conflicts around the world, Palestinians and the Israelites, God, we read about conflicts in our own country as we see more shootings and now nuisance. And God, we pray that you will once again allow us to bring unity to this diversity. God, that you will empower us to not be silent, to speak. Lord, watch over us. Heal us. Be our guide as we continually strive to follow where you lead and to be your church. Thank you for the gifts that you give. Help us to claim those, to use those wisely and creatively to do a whole new thing. And we ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray together, say, our Father, Lord in heaven.
Jesus Christ our Lord, and that Holy Spirit who has come to empower and embolden us, give us fellowship to be Christ's church. Go with us, abide with us now and forever. Amen.